So, it's Sunday. It is late. Um, but it's time for a stash cast. Now, this is one of my larger stash casts, so this is going to run a little longer than usual. Um, just a heads up. And this is not an instance of time traveling. I'm actually doing this day of, and fingers crossed that I can get this up the day that I'm recording it. If for some reason I can't, I might move everything forward. I don't know. I don't like posting late, like really. But for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm a Radiant Noari, your resident witch and creator, who's over to Radius Hand and Denise Divine, where I create myth, magic, and meaning for your everyday life through art, intuition, and energy work. And on Sundays, I like to do a little thing called a stash cast. So, a stash is from the art world and typically um, refers to collections of materials that you use for creative pursuits. Beads, buttons, thread, fabric, paint, you name it. Um, now, that certainly comprises a lot of my stash, but I also like to stash tools. Um, and I include those because I'm a collector of tools, and so it just made sense to share those. So, without further ado, what we're sharing today is handmade fiber tools, most of which are wooden, but not all. So, I'm going to be doing a lot of moving around. Um, I will say there's one tool that I'm going to try and picture. I don't have it handy. I, I got it out and I don't know what happened to it. And I've spent all day looking for it and I can't find it. Um, so there will be one picture of something that you don't see um, below. And my bad. All right, so we had a little, and it really looks like I can reach everything. Um, we're going to go into a little more depth with all of these tools over the next um, couple of weeks, actually several weeks. Last Sunday, I did talk about um, one set of tools already, and that would be these. These are called Nastapinas, and they're just a way to wind yarn into a ball. And we, we've already gone over this. The winding of yarn into a ball is not a ball like a sphere. It's actually a cake. I, for the life of me, don't understand this, and like, if I could go back in time, I would go to whoever decided to call it and be like, okay, you do know that that's not a ball, right? Like, that's, it's flat. Balls aren't flat. I mean, they're not helpful when they are, so, I don't know. Um, but it looks basically like a stick. Um, a lot of them are tapered. That means that it's easier to get the yarn off, and a lot of them have a notch, and that notch is just for you to anchor um, the inside thread that starts um, when they're worked. When you work them, you turn them towards you. Um, as far as method of working, I'm still like getting the hang of it, to be completely honest with you. I've uh, moved it away from me and towards me. Um, gotten like the same results. It's just, uh, it's awkward to turn with one hand and wrap with the other. It's just, it's like the whole pat your head, rub your stomach thing. It takes a little more coordination than I have right now. So we're working on it. Um, which you'll see in the pictures below. And for those of you who are watching this on YouTube, if you scroll to the description right at the top, that link will send you over to Patreon so you can see all the pictures that I'm referencing. Um, you'll see a picture with some yarn wound on this one. Um, this one is for pretty much most of my yarn. This is for craft yarn, um, for art yarn, and just for larger yarns, and that's because it's a larger stick and it can hold a lot more weight a lot easier. Now, of course, that means that this thing is a lot heavier when it's full of yarn than this thing, and you're still going to wind about the same that you would wind with a ball winder, which also winds cakes, not balls. Um, about, you know, three to five ounces is what you're going to get, and after you get past that amount, like, it becomes unwieldy and you don't really want to do it. Um, so, there's that. Um, I also like wooden tools just because, I don't, I don't know, I just do. Let's see. Alright. I have my mouse here. I've also got um, one tool, well two tools, that are not wood, uh, but they go with this whole yarn tool thing we're doing. So it made sense to like include them. <sighs> Let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh my gosh. This is like the worst. There we go. 
I'm trying to see my notes. Okay. So the next tool we've got up is the distaff and I have three. Um, mo and by the way, most of these tools I've bought for myself. Um, there's a tool. This is actually one of them that I didn't, a friend of mine bought it for me, which was very, very kind of them. Well, let's see. I can find it. Just, it's great. Just, just put it at the bottom of the bag. That's a wonderful place for it. So these are all distaffs. And is this staff? She had another stick, right? Are we seeing? It's actually upside down. Um, we seeing a, seeing a pattern here. They're sticks. Um, a distaff holds the fluff. So this, you would wrap, wrap this around the distaff, and you would um, draft from the distaff to either. Um, well, in this case, you would draft to a drop spindle because if you use a spinning wheel there's a distaff on the spinning wheel which um <laughs> the funny thing is um whenever you whenever you uh think of distaffs and spindles a lot of them are actually that sharp pointed thing on the spinning wheel like an old old spinning wheel um and there's usually a there's a slight taper to it but the spindle like the part that's spinning is actually somewhere else um, and it doesn't go there, but that, that what Sleeping Beauty, um, actually put your finger on was more than likely a distaff, which, you know, I have to bring that up to a friend of mine who was doing, um, some work about myths and, um, like hidden meaning because yeah, there's a whole lot there. <laughs> anyway, um, this is an Etruscan ring disca distaff. Um, I love it. It's, it's, I think this is the second one I got. And then we've got, this is modeled after the Osberg, um, distaff, which, uh, it looks a lot more like a wand. Um, and it was named that, I think it's named Osberg because that's where it's, it was found. That's where the ship was found. Um, and this was, a. Uh, I asked, I asked my, um, woodworker, I was like, do you? make one of those and he was like I think so and then voila! yeah I need like a dozen of these I love them fun thing is about these sticks they also double its weapons <laughs> and then this is this is a wrist desk a uh, wrist or an elbow to step so you would hang it from your wrist and this would mean that you wouldn't have to hold it and then also hold it so um, needless to say I've used this one the most I have used the ring it's taken a little it's taking a little bit of use to though. So there's that. Um, let's see, who's next? And you usually use it to like hold roving. Um, you certainly could wind other forms of unprocessed wool around it, but like you wouldn't use it for um, something you were pulling bits off of, like top. It just wouldn't work. Um, and it wouldn't necessarily work for anything that's not kind of in a strip form where you can wrap it around it. Luckily though, I like to work with sliver, which is, um, sliver and there's a, there's a couple of words, a couple of different, uh, forms. We're also trying to be quick and quiet because the wee munchkin is here and I need to like get shit done and not have tiny humans like awake and trying to do things um which is why I'm late I had, lo I had another human here I have several humans here today so yeah doesn't matter uh, looks like I also forgot something so we've got our Nostapina to wind the yarn after it's spun we've got our distaff I should have like introduced these in the right order would have been the distaff first and then the spindles and then the knitting knot or the and then the knitting knotty and the um nostopina i think that's the order i would do and the yarn bowl would be less that's not how it's going now <laughs> so so whatever um we'll do the we'll do this next time okay 
spindles I have the most of. A spindle is, you guessed it, it's another stick. <laughs> um, it's another stick, and this stick has has pieces to it. So these sticks are just plain. This stick has a circle at the top, and this is called the whorl. These are my top whorl spindles. These are actually the first two spindles I bought. This is for spinning. This is for plying. I could also spin a heavier yarn with this, um, but it's also just for plying. Uh, these are both made from, uh, was it salvaged, um, other fiber tools, like uh, other furniture, um, table legs and stuff like that, which I thought was really fun. So many tools here. Let's see, what are the next ones I got? I think those are the last ones I got. Actually, can't be sure. And of course, I forgot to... Forgot... To mute. Because why, why would I remember to do that? I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know who I got next. I want to say I got my Russians next. But I'm not sure. It's a toss-up. Okay, just bear with me. I know I got. I know who I got last. Okay, so these are Tibetans, um, which is a bottom roll spindle. There's another. Um, no, it's not Tibetan. It's Turkish. Um, there's another. There's actually a couple, like several different types of spindles. Um, there's the tackling one, which I think is also a bottom roll. So as you can see, this one's a little longer. This is um, smaller and lighter. And it also means that it's made to spin thinner yarns. Um, this is heavier, so again, this would be something that you would probably ply with because it's so chunky. Um, I don't know that I'd use this one. Obviously, I'm using this one like at the moment. Um, but this also comes with this. And we'll talk about this more, but these like, match, right? Um, that bowl. <laughs> That's what that is, it's a spindle bowl. That bowl is why I bought this, um, to be completely honest. Oh, here we go. Okay, now my Russians. So, this is called a Russian compromise spindle. And the compromise is the hook, as Robin likes to say. And these are also, these are bottom weighted spindles, but notice they don't actually have a whorl. So this is all stick under here. Um, and again, we, you can see the spalted, and the, the spalting is just like a, it's a feature of the wood. It's actually fungus has like started to eat away at it, and that's, that's how it happens. But I think it looks cool. <laughs> so, these are my two real shins. Um, this one's heavier, and again, the heavier ones are made to wind um, heavier yarns. The lighter ones are made to wrap lighter yarns, but as you can see, I'm kind of weighing, I'm spinning about the same weight, um, and that's probably because my spinning is haphazard as hell. That's okay, though. I think it's fun. Okay, and then these are my last, okay, these are, um, okay, look, these are not my last one. Um, these are the almost last ones. I have one more, and these are called a Jelgen. It's a type of um, Scottish spindle. I am still working on making these work. <laughs> Um, they are a little futsy to use, um, while all spindles, and this is a bottom, this is a bottom weighted spindle too, while all spindles work the same way, um, the centrifugal force that they create, um, twines the fiber together and the fibers will lock together and then the spinning of the fiber strengthens the fiber and then applying further strengths in it and it's a whole bunch of like fiber nerdery to be honest with you. Um, these have a tendency to uh, spin slower than something that's supported. So um, the Tibetans are supported spindles. The um, two first ones are drop spindles, which means they have no support. And then the Russians are supported spindles as well. Um, I'm so good. Yeah, like I said, I'm still getting the hang of these, so I don't have any work GR on them. Um, but they, they just spin. They, you know, you, uh, 
we're going the same principle that all the other ones do, really. Um, I also requested, <laughs> Rob was like, Rob, you should, you should make some, you should make some more stuff. Come on, come on, it'll be fine. Um, that's okay. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Ah, we got one more spindle. This is another supported spindle. This is the last spindle I bought. I have not used it. This is a Russian um, with a glass tip. Um, this is what a Russian typically use, uh, looks like. It's very thin, very pointed, and you spin it by flicking it. Um, you do the same motion when you use the compromise. You just have a more substantial part right below the hook to flip. Uh, to flick. This also would be used with a bowl, and I need to get a bowl for it. I'm going to get a bowl from the person who made this one. Um, I want to say this is cherry. I don't know. Maybe. But I love this, and I love the look. Oh, sparkly bit we've got in there. Um, so, I want to be careful with that. Yeah, that would be my most expensive spindle, I think. Um, and that's me throwing stuff on the floor because that's cool. Speaking of throwing, <laughs> let's see. Now we've got some uh, some spinning tools. All right. So we've already talked about the bowl. This bowl goes with the. I think it's this Holly. Um, this bowl goes with the the tall supported spindle. This is a spinning spoon, and this is another spinning bowl, which is just metal. I use this one with my Russians a lot. This one I've used um, with the tall supported. I probably, in the time being, would also use it with the glass uh, tipped one. This I use with the um, Russian as well. Uh, yeah, this one's a little deeper than this one is, but I find that they both like work honestly equally well for me. So there's that. Is that everything? Is everything there? See if I can like sit this down. Cause a fun fact, uh, my foot's currently numb. Super, super awesome, tastic. Okay, what's left are my bowls. I think my bowls and my nitty naughty. Such a silly ass word. And my hook that I can't show you because I don't know what the fuck it is. So this is nitty naughty. This comes apart, and I kind of wish it didn't come apart. It would have made it harder to. Would have made it harder to um, ship, but yeah, this is roasted maple. This is the finish on it. It's very pretty, and it, you know, I don't know if this is turned to look like table legs or if it might have been a table leg at one point. Anyway, this is how you measure yarn. So this actually is 59.5 inches, which is a really weird length, by the way. Uh, of yarn. So I know that if I wrap the length of yarn around this one time, it's 59.5 inches. And then what I would do is I would count the amount of times I've wrapped yarn around this. Um, and then I know how much yarn I've got. Now, this is still an approximation. Um, and it's always going to be an approximation because what happens is as you go around, the yarn starts to pile up here, right? It starts to pile up here. It starts to pile up here and then here. So at the very beginning, it's a 59.5 inch. At the very end, if you've got a couple of layers, it's a little longer than that. So it's not quite that. Also, a lot of times when you're winding yarn, you're winding it under tension, which means you're stretching the yarn. So it's going to come out a little longer than it actually is at rest, which is just, it's just like one of those nerd things that I think if you were to think about it would be really obvious but I think most people don't think about it because there's not there's not really any reason to I mean, there just isn't like who cares it's just whatever cool is that right all right so what's left are my yarn bowls um I will do a little we'll do a little piece about the the hook that I was going to show you it is hand turned now the thing with it is that you can't get this hook anymore. Um, it is a double-ended uh, hook, so it's used for specifically for Tunisian crochet 
so that you can work back and forth on the hook. Um, and the hooks on either side are facing the other direction. It is a, what is it, uh, it's a U, I think, which makes it a 50 millimeter, I think. Thanks, right, because it's like an SS25. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's the biggest tool I've got. That's properly neat. I technically have two, uh, like a set of knitting needles that's bigger. I don't know how many millimeters wide, but it has to be, I have to get it sanded down. I can find a, I can find a woodworker who can sand them down for me. Um, I mean, I could do it myself. I don't really want to. I'd rather send them to somebody else. I'm like, here, fix this for me, thanks. Um, anyway. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. The Jenkins Woodworking is the person who made it, and they used to work with Stitch Diva. They don't anymore. Uh, I don't know why. I think I've tried to find them, and I couldn't find them. So I think that the business might have just closed down, or just moved in another direction, or whatever, what have you. So as a result, there's no, there's no linking. Um, I will show some pictures I have of the tool, um, and when I find the damn thing, I'll like show you the whole thing. I'll update this uh, post, but just yeah, yeah. So last but not least. We have my yard bowls. Now, um, most of my, like most of my tools, they are wooden, but I've got two that aren't. So we'll start with those. Oh no, we won't start with those. We'll start with the wooden ones. That's a lie. We won't start with the wooden ones. Okay. So, there we go. This is not actually a yarn bowl. I use it like a yarn bowl. This is a bowl from my mother, uh, who was a potter. This is one of the only pieces of her pottery that I have. So this yarn bowl does not leave my house. <laughs> it stays here. Um, it's also heavy. So it's, it's, it's good in that um, you really don't have to worry about it like all oh, first moving anywhere. It's, it's pretty hefty. Um, I like to use it as a yarn bowl because the lip kind of stops the yarn from like jumping out. Um, then I've got this. This is a daisy set. It is a fiber, like a felted basket. I think it makes a great yarn ball. And then I can fit my, my notions in it as well. Uh, I've got, let's see, I think. This is the first wooden bowl. This is a, a second from um, Darn Good, which means there's like a slight imperfection in it. Um, I like this. I like the style. It's really shallow, so it's good for like one. Um, this is actually the last one I bought, but it's basically the same exact design. It's just ginormous. Um, and so this I use for like larger yarn or several skeins at a time. Okay. And then this one, I think this one might be my favorite. I like it because it's, uh, it's fluted. Um, it's got several holes. It's deeper, and it's still pretty wood. So there you go. That's all my, uh, that's all my yarn bowls. That's all my tools. Um, what they're used for is exactly how I use them. So um, the distaff holds the, the roving, the spindles spin the yarn, the nitty nanny measures the yarn, the nostapin can wind the yarn, um, the crochet hook or knitting needles or whatever have you um, work the yarn and the bowls are where the yarn is worked from. So a little yarn management, if you will. Uh, that being said, uh, I think that's everything. So what I'm going to include also in the bottom in the pictures is I've got a few pictures of some of these tools in use, um, like the Nostapina. I've got one with some uh, yarn wrapped around it so you can see that all of the you'll see all of the tools um, I did them in sets normally I will do tools um, I'll separate everything and have it you know all strewn out because it is so many though, and that will mean so many pictures I decided that this time around what I'm doing is um, having the uh, 
didn't think about the whole. I'm gonna have to transfer this to my computer. Oops. I like to think of things. You know, after the fact. Great, great time. Great time. Look at this. Anyway. Um, I've got a few in use, but I'm gonna all the pictures have them all together. It was just um, it was just really easier. Um, and then I've got a few just where it's a setup of the sample. This is kind of just a glance of what it would look like, and some finished bits. So there you go. Uh, I think that's everything. Do, 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 do. I've also yeah no that's everything. Okay that's everything. Yeah. Right. So. Like I said, if you want to see pictures of everything I've talked about, some of the use, blah, 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 scroll into the post below. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can hit that link at the top and it'll send you over to Patreon so you can see all the pictures. I have got, um, I was like, my quest, yeah, I think I should do question and then pictures. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> um, we might, we might, we might switch to that one. So um, my question for you is, do you have any handmade fiber tools? Have you used them before? What have you used them for? Uh, what kind do you have? Tell me. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I've also got links to um, all of the places that I've got these. Most of the links, uh, most of the items come from uh, the Dancing Goats, so I'll link to them. The Nitty Natty is from a place called Wolverton Mountain. Um, and I also have a, the Stephen Willett, which is where the last spindle came from. And let's see. And then two of the yarn bowls came from Michael's. One came from Darn Good Yarn. So I'll have everything linked. Um, I'll also find Daisy said now that I'm thinking about it. So there you go. There's that. Um, of course, my websites, Aradius Hand and Danae's Divine, are also linked below. So if you like to see any of my art you can visit a radius hand and um, all of my active social media are linked as well Facebook Twitter and Instagram where I like to spend the most time and because you stayed you stayed to the end what are we talking about tomorrow well we're, it's, it's Monday motivation it's also Labor Day um, I'm gonna be working big surprise um, so I'm gonna. I'm also. Tr I'm gonna hope that I can get some more videos done. I have a bunch recorded already, but I'd like to get more recorded because that would be great. Just make my life easier. Um, we'll see though. So, thank you for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, remember to like and subscribe so you can see more videos like this. And a big thank you to all of my patrons. You make these videos possible course get some like little perks on the side um, and if you're watching this on YouTube and you're not a patron yet consider coming over to patreon to join us the more the merrier um, I share all of these videos I also do some monthly videos that are all for patrons only as well as some little bonuses and extras um, that come from the community work that I do metaphysically speaking so there you go as has promised this video is longer than I thought it was gonna be uh, actually, it wasn't longer than I thought it was going to be. It's exactly as long as I thought it was going to be. Because I knew I had a lot to share. I'm tired. Can you tell? I can tell. I'm having trouble focusing. Hooray! So, yeah, we're good. Any hoozy. I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and a little more lucid than now. And hopefully I will also get a bunch more videos done. Because, like, I have so many so much stash and so many art hauls to, to like share with you it's a little obscene um that's why there's so much stuff behind me because like all of it is for art hauls pretty much pretty much i like stuff and i do i collect things for work anyway so until then um so long farewell auf saying and goodbye and i will see you on the morrow toodles